Praise the Lord to you all. We are in the midst of the national lockdowns and local curfews. We miss many good things and we have to sacrifice many things which are which we are fond of. Nevertheless, we have learned to contend with what was given to us or permitted to us even in this lockdown. In the same way, there are many lockdowns in the spiritual life also now. We must learn to keep our spiritual life also at times like this. Our joy should never decrease because the word of God says so. Today's message will be on Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. To can you men know how try halakas ni tinga ong pad to you men. Rejoice in the Lord it's okay always even in lockdowns like this. It is possible to rejoice at good times or at normal condition. But is it possible to rejoice at times like this? More than 23,000 people are affected by the coronavirus in India. 26 lakhs people in the world. And it continues to threaten all people. Right from the palace to the pavement. People are dying daily. And the spread is increasing rapidly in spite of the best efforts by one and all. Income is falling. No wages for daily laborers. Cut in the salary of monthly salary people. Available resources are depleting. Lack of agricultural production. No fishing. No production at factories. Non-availability of things other than the essential things. High cost for even the essential things. Not able to go out. Not able to worship in the church. Freedom curtailed. Threatening about our future. Children losing their morale and education. Bleak future of our economy. An attack on all friends. Can we rejoice at this situation also? Yes. Rejoice always says the word of God. Our God who is the source of our joy always wants us to rejoice in Him. We must learn to rejoice in the Lord even in adverse conditions. For this is what the Lord expects from His people. This is the experience of some of the saints of God. Psalm says in Psalm 149 verse 6, Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. What is this high praises? He is praising God at the time of adversity. Now let us see some of the aspects of rejoicing. A. Grace is commanded to all when Paul says rejoice. A. Grace is commanded to all when Paul says rejoice because it is delightful. Our soul delights has come when joy enters. It is true. It is demonstrative. It sparkles, shines, sings. Joy is a bird. Let it fly in the open heavens and its music be heard of all. Three, it is stimulating. It urges its possessor to do great deeds. Four, it is It is influential. Others will be able attracted to Jesus by the joy of saints. 5. It is contagious. It spreads to others and they are gladdened by our rejoicing. 6. It is commanded. It is not left optional. It is commanded because it makes us like God. Jesus was not a man of moods. It is for our profit. We learn to live by the word of God. It is good for others and they glorify God. B. For rejoicing, the time is appointed. It is always. When you cannot rejoice in any other, rejoice in God. When you can rejoice in other things, do not leave joy in God. When you have not before rejoiced, begin at once. When you have long rejoiced, do not cease for a moment. When others are with you, Lead them in this direction. When you are alone, enjoy to the full this rejoicing. Third aspect, C. It is emphasized. Paul says, again I say rejoice. Oh. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16. Rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. Paul repeats this, his exhortation knowing fully well about the times of difficulty and sufferings. He insists on it. St. Paul is a man who, As we know, was called to suffer much. 
Acts of the Apostle chapter 9 verse 16 says For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Yes, Saint Paul went through lot of sufferings as we read in Romans chapter 8 verse 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus our lord again in second corinthians chapter 11 if we read verses from 23 to 28 are they not ministers of christ i speak as a fool i am more in labors more abundant in stripes above measure in presence more frequent in deaths of of the jews five times received i 40 stripes say one thrice was i beaten with rods once was i stoned thrice i suffered shipwreck a night and a day i have been in the deep in journeyings often in perils of waters in perils of robbers in perils by my own countrymen in perils by the heathen in perils in the city in perils in the wilderness in perils in the sea in perils among false brethren in weariness and painfulness in watchings often in hunger and thirst in fasting so often in cold and nakedness beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily the care of all the churches and in other places also we read about his sufferings it seems all throughout his short time of ministry he only suffered after going through this only he says rejoice always and he says again i say rejoice the Rejoicing was practiced or experienced by Paul and other saints. First of all, let us see about Saint Paul. In spite of all the sufferings and bonds, he is always joyful, and he shows it in his writings, especially in the Epistle to Philippians. In Philippians chapter one verse four, he sweetens prayer with joy. Again, Philippians chapter one verse eighteen, he rejoices that Christ is preached. Philippians chapter 1 verse 25 he wishes to live to gladden the church and Philippians chapter 2 verse 2 to see the members like minded was his joy Philippians chapter 2 verse 16 it was his joy that he should not run in vain Philippians chapter 3 verse 1 his farewell to them was rejoice in the lord Philippians chapter 3 verse 3 He speaks of those who rejoice in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 verse 1. He calls his converts his joy and crown. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 4, 10 and 16, he expresses his joy in the kindness. So what is the conclusion? To all our people, let us use this as a blessing. Rejoice in the Lord. Let's see about Jesus. Though Jesus Christ was going through untold pain and agony, He always had the joy in him even at the excruciating painful hour. We read in Hebrew chapter 12 verse 2, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross joyfully, despising the shame. For whom did he endure this? Yes, it is for us. In Hebrew chapter 2 verse 10, we read, For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. In bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. He is showing an example that we must rejoice always. we have seen about saint paul and our lord and savior jesus christ now let us see about habakkuk habakkuk says about such an incident in habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 and 
although the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall fruit be in the vines the labor of the olive shall fail and the fields shall yield no meat the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls yet i will rejoice in the lord i will joy in the god of my salvation here he says that the enemy came as a whirlwind to scatter him and the rejoicing was to devour the poor secretly we read that in verse 14 thou did strike through his staffs with the head of his villagers they came out as a whirlwind to scatter me their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly but he boldly confesses what he will do in that occasion he says one although the fig tree shall not blossom in judges chapter 9 if you read verse 11 but the fig tree said unto them should i forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees here we find the sweetness and good fruit of the fig tree these are the experiences of the children of god during these days of lockdowns you don't have fellowship with brethren and not able to enjoy the sweetness of the lord from them through their testimonies in the church and also not able to bear good fruits unto the lord as we read in john 15:5 nevertheless you must rejoice in the lord secondly he says neither shall fruit be in the wine judges chapter 9 verse 13 says and the wine said unto them should i leave my wine which cheereth god and man and go to be promoted over the trees here we find wine that cheereth god and man these are all the experiences of the spirit filled men of god having the experiences of the fullness of the spirit now you are not getting that fellowship you are not getting chance to be get filled in the spirit of god in the holy spirit because no tiring meetings held in the church yet you must rejoice in the lord and get filled in the spirit at home with family people till the lockdown is over thirdly habakkuk says the labor of the olive shall fail in judges chapter 9 verse 9 we find but the olive tree said unto them should i leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor god and man and go to be promoted over the trees fatness with which they honor god and man this shows the experiences of the brethren who enjoys the life of fatness or riches in god for the praise of his glory you are lacking in that fellowship and their experiences of fatness even then you must rejoice in the lord your god fourthly habakkuk says about the fields shall yield no meat Field refers to the church or the fellowship of the saints. You are not able to come to the church and have fellowship with saints. You are not getting the manna or food from them. You may also feel you are not getting strong meat, according to Hebrew chapter five verse fourteen, from other sources. In spite of that, you must rejoice, because the Lord is able to feed you with manna and strong meat even at the time of drought. Fifthly, he says. the flock shall be cut off from the fold the flock are the sheep souls the believers this will happen in two ways a group of people of god will finish the race and depart from us physically and another group of people also will backslide and leave us being deceived by the enemy the devil as we read in second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 and second timothy chapter 4 verse 10 it should not make us sad but we must rejoice in the lord because god never make mistakes he will never fail nor forsake his own then finally habakkuk says there shall be no herd in the stall the herd speaks of the servants of god servants of god will also leave from us in the same way as mentioned above though these things will grieve our hearts much but it should not affect our rejoicing in the lord people of god will have to go through paths like this because these are all the last days but in all these occasions they must see that they rejoice in the lord for such people the lord will be the strength and will make them to walk in the high places that's what we read in habakkuk chapter 3 verse 19 the lord god is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet and he will make me to walk upon mine high places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments and also he will feed us with the heritage of jacob 
Isaiah chapter 58 verse 14 Then shall thou delight thyself in the Lord and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it Again remember the joy of the Lord is your strength Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 Then he said unto them go your way eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared for this day is holy unto our lord neither be ye sorry for the joy of the lord is your strength yes the joy of the lord is our strength as i have told you because these are all the last days occasions like this will come and go but we must learn to rejoice in the lord always let us rejoice and let us not lose the strength of god rejoice in the lord always may god bless you all.